Hello everyone, why? There we go, okay, the camera's fine, everything's fine. Hello everyone, the microphone though may be a little intense. To be fair, I am intense though. Hello everyone, hot stuff sniper. <laughs> welcome to the stream for the first time, glad to have you here. Logan, hello, welcome. Dip, glad to have you here as always, threatening me, always a good time. Bigfish97, hello again. And McVash, um, you're here. I don't recognize you, but it says you're not a first time chatter, so welcome back, question <laughs> mark. Uh, glad I can start streaming the way I wanted to. I'm excited because I am going to woo the chicken man. <laughs> um, I literally have been like editing the last stream of this for the last like three days <laughs> because I've been, I don't know, once it hits like a two hour mark of a stream, it takes me like a maximum of three days to edit it. <laughs> Like down, edit down the VOD into like a YouTube video and even then I only edit out like an hour of the stream. But anyway, I have been like intensely active in this game because I've been watching back my old playthrough. So now we're gonna move on. We're gonna load the game. We're gonna bring this up. I, I guess I'm at the sixth bite. Is that where I'm at? I don't know, I failed last time, somehow. I guess. <laughs> I didn't know I could fail, well, never mind, I didn't know I could fail culinary school. Very easy to fail culinary school to the point where my college, my culinary school had a graduation rate of like 47%. Um, not because people failed, because people just dropped out because culinary school is expensive. Before anyone can relax, the cafeteria lights dim. <laughs> Cooking with cultists. I thought it said cuties for a second. Now we're cooking with cultist cuties. Cutie cultists? Cute cultists. <laughs> it's fine. My rival's making dramatic announcement. The lunch we prepared today is, yeah, timed cook off. Um, <laughs> I failed this last time because I didn't know anything. Um, I'm gonna continue on though with the taking care of my Tamagotchis because they're screaming at me, which means also everyone else has to take a drink of water because we're staying hydrated and we're taking care of, I didn't name this one. <laughs> I don't know, I, <laughs> I started up a Tamagotchi while I was drunk because it was my boyfriend's birthday um, yesterday, but we had like a little get together with some of his friends on Saturday. Um, and Saturday night, like, as we're all drinking and I'm, like, drunk as fuck, uh, someone was like, oh my god, do you have Tamagotchis? Like, let me take care of one. And I'm like, hell yeah, because not only is this a great idea, because <laughs> we can use this as a drinking game right now, and every time the Tamagotchi beeps, you take a drink of alcohol. But in the morning, once it wakes up, I can use it as a motivation to not get a hangover, because I have to take a drink of water every time it beeps. And what is more annoying during a day? Count me in. Yeah, we've 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 discussed this. Things are happening. <laughs> oh dear chicken, it's me. It is me, Evil Boy Productions. Welcome back to the stream. We're not gonna fail this time. Um the timer's ready. I am not. That's what I'm talking about. I stand corrected. Oh god, I'm <laughs> I'm afraid. I don't want to fail like last time, but I actually have no idea what I did in order to fail. I remember the options I picked and which ones were technically incorrect. Did the stream just restart? What just happened? <laughs> Are we okay? Are things okay? <laughs> Is that yes to things are okay or yes to the stream just restarted? Because I think it might be both. I also just realized that my water bottle is open. What is happening? Oh my god. Life's rough. Are we good? <laughs> we back, we good. What a vibe. Anyway. <laughs> Thought Mason did or something. I'm gonna use that as an excuse. Uh, I mean, I didn't do anything to end the stream. <laughs> Uh, I think my Wi-Fi just stuttered a little bit, but I I would like the excuse of Mason like I don't know playing with the Wi-Fi cord or something and just accidentally yanked it out of the wall for a second. 
I like that better than anything else. So also my microphone is like, I gotta find like a good place to put this where I'm not screaming, but I'm also not hitting it. <laughs> Life's rough, guys. That was good enough. <laughs> All right, back in it, I guess, to... <laughs> We're gonna woo chicken people. Yeah, yeah, no one cares, Colonel. I don't even- I don't care about anyone anymore. I don't care about Ashley. I don't care about fucking sprinkles. I care about this, uh, <laughs> battle competition, I guess. We're making mashed potatoes, which... I, I don't know why we're making mashed potatoes. We made mashed potatoes last time. But now I'm boiling potatoes again, and uh, water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. That's... that's it. <laughs> Alright, yeah, 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 yeah. You're going to season this chicken. There are 11 herbs and spices. I know that one's correct. I, I think after this I have no idea. Yeah, I don't know any of the answers after this. Now that we've got the basic steps going, um, it's not trust, so gratitude? <laughs> I knew one. Okay, sure, yeah. The best way to get the best fla flavor is through gratitude. Not trust, which is what I thought last time. My classmates are rooting for me, but Ashley is simply stronger and faster than me. I better pick up the pace if I want to survive. When I was a child, my father told me to never forget- Hold on. <clears throat> when I was a young boy, my father! Uh, yeah, small town where big dreams are born. Time for some scallop potatoes. Dude, scallop potatoes are good. Uh, yeah, I don't know why I'm- I just automatically assume- I think actually we might be making a pot pie. Anyway, what's the next question? You try to shut out the noise of the arena and focus on your cooking. What's the sound of success? Apparently it's not sizzling, it's silence? Yeah, sure, fuck it. That's right, when they taste your cooking, they'll be so taken aback with that that they'll be unable to speak. You notice Colonel Sanders out of the corner of your eye. I believe in you, Amanda. He's actually cheering you on, which would be awesome, except knowing that he's watching makes you totally forget what you're doing. Now all you're thinking about is Colonel Sanders riding a horse to culinary school, which is super fucking weird. But we're gonna ignore that because, again, we're going after the chicken empire. How many spoonfuls of gravy? Uh, Colonel Sanders blowing up- Ah! Ah! Grr! Ah! Stranded on a desert island with only one dessert cookbook. Which do I take? What a hunk! I know, right? You know what? Shouldn't you be focused on the challenge? You're falling behind. Uh, wedding vows. What does that have to do with crafting a spectacularly fried chicken and a delicate baked bu biscuits? Yeah, we're making fried chicken! But Colonel Sanders already made fried chicken for everyone for lunch on their first day, so like, my fried chicken isn't gonna compare to his fried chicken. Not that I care about that. I don't care about culinary school. I just want to impress him so when he dies, again, I can get the chicken empire fortune. But... Also, this just isn't good for culinary school. Is Does this culinary school really just teach people how to make chicken and like, nothing else? They're like, this is the most prestige culinary school in all of America. And all we learn how to do here is deep fry things. Deep fry poultry to be precise. I'm really struggling to keep up. At the next station over, Ashley has already begun plating elements of her dish. It's colorful and complex. To make up time, you toss biscuit dough into a stand mixer. As you do, the crowd gasps. Yikes. Yeah, I know. People keep insulting me for using a stand mixer. I don't know why, uh, before it gets overmixed. Amanda, no. Why? Why would I shove my hand in there? Is this just a bad time? Because I answered all of the corrections, or I answered all of the questions correctly. The battle's over, but I didn't finish my dish. This is what happened last time, but did I lose again? I suppose you should at least tell us what you prepared. Well, because I'm the sweetest, I skip straight to dessert. Yeah, 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 we get it. This bougie-ass dessert that I very much now want to make. Um, <laughs> it's literally just like, what, a white chocolate dome? Take white chocolate, melt it, put it in the shape of a dome, put it on a plate underneath or on top of honeycomb. Make a, yeah, cheese croquette honeycomb ice cream two different ways. I know how to make nougat. I'm not sure how to make blueberry gelée. But I'll figure it out in order to make this. Hmm. Simplicity <gasps> isn't your strong suit, Ashley. 
He places a soft covered finger onto his lips. Okay, I put myself in between Colonel Sanders and Ashley last time. And that was a bad time, so I'm gonna internalize my rage. Which is what I do already normally, not in the game. So I'm just gonna let my rage burn so intensely with my eyes that they burst into flames. The flames cause my eyebrows to catch fire, which turns to ash. They fall off your face, which means people have a hard time understanding your emotions for the rest of the semester. Perhaps forever. Embarrassed and ashamed of your poor performance, not to mention your crispy fried brow, that you run to the quad to be alone. What? <laughs> I'm so mad. Like, I'm so mad that I shoved my hand in that mixer. What the stupidest idea. The stupidest thing I could do. And I'm like, yeah, no, sure. Without hesitation. This wouldn't have happened if everyone didn't fucking insult me for using a KitchenAid mixer for biscuits. No, you can only do it by hand. What are we? Where is this? <laughs> fucking, uh, I don't know. The 1800s? where electricity doesn't really exist yet, so we don't have access to stand mixers. It's just like, oh, it's the best because it's handmade. And get fucked. It's Colonel Sanders, probably here to tell me that Ashley... <laughs> He's probably here to tell you that he and Ashley are in love and have decided to get married. And he won't even ask you to cater his wedding because you're a terrible chef and an awful person. You try to hide from him, but he approaches you directly. I know you're hurting right now. Not just from the devastating loss, but with that run-in with the mixer and that small fire. We should get that checked out. <laughs> yeah, my eyebrow, my eyes literally just burst into flames. I don't know what the symptom of what disease and or virus <laughs> that's from, what kind of symptoms I'm... <laughs> I, 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 I got nothing. I'm fine. Can't you just leave me alone? I'm a loser. I'm not fit to fill your fryer. That sounded sexual. <laughs> I'll never be a master chef. Failure is a part of life, not just for you, but for all of us. Do you ever think I've never failed anything before? That's exactly what I think. <laughs> Well then, think again. I wasn't always the man you see before you. Enrolled in culinary school, incredibly handsome, successful, motivated. Well, handsome, sure, but I was born that way. <laughs> but I've walked other paths uh, and arrived at dead ends. I was passionate about life, but I failed as an obstetrician. I was passionate about justice, but I failed as a lawyer. I was passionate about livestock, but I failed as a mule handler. Uh, that one was especially humiliating. Mules can be really cruel. I lost my business partner to a gunfight, and I lost my innocence when I picked up a firearm and put a bullet in my rifle. He survived. Only for a while, anyhow. <laughs> Colonel Sanders. <laughs> I'm not sure I want to be gaslighting this man into thinking I'm a... I'm the perfect one for him because I'm I'm starting to starting to get frightened <laughs> that I'm gonna be like oh my god I love you and then our love falls apart because I don't actually love him I just love him for his chicken money uh, and then he's gonna kill me in my sleep before I, I get the chance to kill him in his sleep. Anyway, continue on with your tragic backstory. <laughs> I didn't know. Uh, people see my delicate ribbon tie and my well-kept beard and assume I've had- I've got it all together, which is true now, but it hasn't always been. Sounds like this guy could use a real hug. I resolved then that I was go- what? I resolved then that I was going to amount to some- Sure. No amount of hours, laborers, or money could deter me from giving the best I had to give. As Colonel Sanders changed focus. Uh, you can see something ignite inside him. A burning passion. One has to remember that every failure can be a stepping stone to something better. My new dream is pure. It's honest. It's something that a humble man in a crisp white suit can be proud of. I like that he's just, like, been listing off all the things that he's been, like, garbage at. Um, and failures. Just, like, all of his failures. And he's just like, nah, this is the time. I'm going to make a chicken, a chicken empire. I am just so good at making chicken, I'm oh, sure. I will create a new chain of chicken restaurants that will bring joy to the entire world and make up for my past misdeeds. You got a lot of pressure riding on these chicken shoulders. Pop, the fuck are you 
doing here? Just as the moment grows intimate, you're interrupted by a threatening, shadowy presence. Is it, is it not, Pop? Battle scared from the night before, you prepare for your worst. It's the Spork Monster! Borko? <laughs> hey, Borko, it's you from yesterday. You said you weren't gonna show up again. But here you are. Also, thank you, uh... Oh, God. And, and I'm just gonna go with MLC. <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, tis I. Uh, I know I said I wouldn't be back after the whole fight to the death thing. Um, maybe you don't really want to see me anymore, but I just wanted to say that I was wrong to attack you, and I should apologize. I know it's like always having to look over your shoulder. Monster problems, <laughs> am I right? <laughs> you, uh, you, oh you. <laughs> I know monster problems, you know me. A fucking monster. <laughs> ah, thanks, Borko. I'm glad there really are no hard feelings. Getting jumped by a giant creature in the dark of the night can really rile a person up. Uh, I also wanted to apologize for the way I switched right into attack mode. I like that we're just apologizing to each other for fighting each other. Like, oh yeah, I'm so sorry that I just like appeared out of the middle of nowhere and started attacking you. Oh no, no, totally same. <laughs> I know that you're strong and cooking school can put a person under a lot of stress. Oh, trust me, you don't even know the fucking half of it. <laughs> I always used to go, uh, I actually used to go to this school. I wasn't always a spork monster, you see. I don't believe it. You were a human once? Well... No, I, w I was a golden retriever, but I was still a student until one day some mean kids with a magic spell book cast a dark enchantment on me. I was forever transformed. So not only are there corgi professors, but also there are golden retriever students. Gotcha, gotcha. A magic spell book. Precisely. I had procur procured a copy for myself. But somewhere along the way, I've lost it. If you find such a book, I beg you. I uh, beg of you. Respect it. You're a powerful chef, and you shouldn't rely on such dark and evil magic. No. You should be protecting the innocent from those who cheat them through the sorcery. Uh, if you don't need me, or if you need me, don't fear. I will be there. <laughs> me, me and the uh, <laughs> spork monster have a soul bond, and now he's my familiar. <laughs> He'll help me fight in battle. It sounds like there are some bad cooks in the kitchen of life. Amanda, together, I'm sure we can defeat them. Come back to my hide- I thought I was gonna say highway. Come back to my highway. You know, it's a highway. Cars drive on it. But we can sit on the middle of it if we really want to. <laughs> if you want to play chicken. Anywho, come back to my hideaway and we can discuss. A personal invite? I can't imagine what Colonel Sanders' home must be like, but it sounds like I'm about to find out. Did we just leave school? We... That was lunchtime. Like, I just finished lunch. We skipped the last half of the day. This is only a three-day course. I skipped a sixth of class. Out of all of the entirety of all of the class time, I've missed a sixth of it. Fuck it. Stepping inside Sanders' home, surrounded by his things, you start to feel a special bond with him. Does- is that- <laughs> Does that baby have a fucking goatee? Yeah, sure. Fuck it. I. Looks like you have such an exciting life, Colonel Sanders. Every day can be an adventure if you approach it with the right attitude. Long ago, I made the decision to never stop searching, never stop working, never stop imagining. Have you been working on any new recipes of your own lately? I'm always excited to talk about food with another ambitious chef. Well, there is something. It's just a side dish that I've been tinkering with, but I've been trying to find the right balance of flavors and textures. I'm not sure I've nailed it yet, but I'm close. Hello, Ignatius Jelly. <laughs> it was a half day. Yeah, sure. You can... Sure, Father Kala. You can argue that all you want. I'd like to think I'm skipping class. I'm playing hooky with Colonel Sanders. Colonel Sanders' eyes perk up as he starts wondering what your dish might be describing. It's meant to be paired with something spicy or something crispy or both, perhaps? Now you've got them right where you want them. Should you reveal your new creation to him or keep it a secret just for you? I'm gonna 
to reveal it because why would I get the only secret that I'm keeping for myself is is that I basically hate this man at this point and I'm entirely in this for the money. You just said that you're ready to sh ready as you're ever be to share your original cooking with Colonel Sanders. But where you can talk yourself out of it, you decide to dive in head first. You reach into your lunch bag for your special dish that you've been keeping on ice all day. I present to you my original coleslaw. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, KFC coleslaw is garbage. Uh, it used to be good, and then around like, I wanna say like the late 2000s, early 2010s, I feel like they changed their recipe, and then, I don't know, it just became garbage after that. It used to be good, and then they changed the recipe and now it's garbage. So like this, I'm so glad that I'm in charge of making the coleslaw to prove more that I do not belong in culinary school because not only did I decide to make a dish that someone else made for a competition, um, I also stuck my hand in a KitchenAid mixer and I made shitty coleslaw. I don't deserve to be here. <gasps> Magnificent! Shut it, Colonel! Together you two chow down on the creamy slaw until a spoonful remains in the bowl. Do you mind if I... Hold on to the last bite. I'd like to have it around so I can admire its taste later and think back on this moment. Are you crying? <laughs> you could offer to make him more, but he seems like a very sentimental kind of guy. <laughs> sure, why not? Please, make yourself comfortable. I'll be back in just a moment. You realize now would be the perfect time to do some snooping. Yeah, let me... Around the room are various items that you can look closer at. Each item seems to radiate memories and emotions. Tap on an item to discover more about the colonel. I want to look at the baby picture. <laughs> Adorable little baby boy crawls across the floor from a goatee mustache combo he sports. You figure this must be Colonel Sanders himself. So you're telling me he's going to steal the recipe. Good. I hope he does. It's shitty coleslaw. It's a shitty recipe. <laughs> But also, he said that he failed so much at, like, so many other things, yet there's this baby picture of him with a fucking drumstick. You couldn't have said, like, I don't know, natural ambition. I know this is kind of weirdly based off of... What the fuck was that? Was that the game? I don't know. I... But, like, it seems like you have, like, I don't know, this game seems to be based off of, like, Colonel Sanders' life, but also that makes it so much weirder that, like, this man that died in the 80s, they made a fucking dating simulator for him based off of his, loosely based off of his life. In the weirdest ways. Okay, yeah. Or maybe that little drumstick that he has, waving like a rattle. Adorable. Who frames a baby picture of themselves? Probably the same person that would make their own face the logo of their company they founded. Am I right? hey <laughs> Anyway, tell me more about the urn. Take a closer look at the large urn sitting on the nearby pedestal. There's a plaque on it. It's dusty, but you wipe it off. You can read the inscription. Colonel Sanders. Died in, uh... <laughs> whatever. Died in... I got nothing. <laughs> the 1980s? I, I'm trying to remember, like, what year it is exactly. All oh, my past careers and business failures. <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> um, what else is there? This candle? I'm a slut for a good candle. A scented candle. You pick it up and try to identify the smell. It's gravy scented. <laughs> Power tool? Freshly starched collar? A piece of wood floating in a lake? Summer of 69? No, it's one of the secret ingredients. It's... Why did that door just open? I don't need to know. I, I want to know what's in the safe. Because that's where people keep secret things. And boy, howdy Jesus, am I Snoop? I'm going to need to know not only the secret recipe. I, I, you know what? I don't even need to know the secret recipe. I just need to know uh, all of your bank info. All of your bank details. <laughs> As soon as you turn the dial to 11, 11, 11, the safe opens. Inside, you find a single note. No! No, chicken cannot be prepared sashimi style. Don't! <laughs> Don't 
do that. Sashimi is just raw fish. Which means you would just be serving people salmonella. In Japan it can. I mean, they probably, I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised if, like, uh, Japan has, like, a different, uh, I don't know. Because there's, like, things in the U.S. where they have, like, different laws where, like, you have to, like, do certain things with, like, your eggs. Which is why in the U.S. we refrigerate our eggs, whereas, like, every other part of the world does not refrigerate their eggs because they don't require that, like... We basically wash our eggs... And it's weird, like, it makes, like, the holes porous, which makes it a lot easier and, like, susceptible to, um, you know, being bad. So maybe other places do that with, uh, I don't know. Maybe Colonel's onto something that I, I don't know about. I'm questioning it hardcore. Um, let me look at this. <laughs> a lock of silver hair is woven through the teeth of the comb. Upon further inspection, you realize that the hair therein isn't just it's in silvery color. It's actually made of spun silver. <laughs> sure. Fuck it. <laughs> I know it's a very realistic stuffed chicken sitting on a corner table. When you pick it up, you realize it isn't just realistic. It's real. Yeah, I know. Taxidermy chicken. Uh, yeah, sure. A little note clipped to the chicken's foot reads, The true state bird of the great state of Kentucky. <laughs> is there- I'm sorry. Is the state bird of Kentucky not a chicken? Because, like, we need to update that now. Uh, you gaze out the window across the vast lake and mountain range beyond. <laughs> Just then, Ghost of Student pops up. Are you thinking about heading out into the woods on a quest to avenge my death? Wait, I never learned your name. Why would I avenge you? I can tell you my name right now. It's- I- can't you see I'm in the middle of something? I open the window a crack and the ghost of the student is swept out with a breeze. Uh, I guess I'll go through the rest of the picture. It's a photo of Colonel Sanders, except he's an old man visiting the pyramids of Egypt. Interesting. Is the cardinal? No, it's the chicken now. Um, one of the framed photos shows an old man who looks a bit like Colonel Sanders standing with a friend. They hold chicken drumsticks and appear to be cheersing them. You look closely and see that there's a short inscription. I wonder who my friend Pete is. Uh, I think that's it. Now I think I have to go through the <laughs> door. Uh, you open the door to find Colonel Sanders' closet and find a row of his signature white suits hanging within. You take one of them off its hanger and try it on. The jacket is a bit thick for me, but it's soft and comfortable. You give yourself a deep hug, uh, breathing in his scent. They say that home is where the heart is. Is this what they meant? Before you can look any further, you hear Colonel Sanders returning. He has a new dish that he's been working on, and he wants you to taste it. Tr you try to act casual, until he asks you why he's you're wearing his jacket. Aww. I don't usually loan those out, but I must say, it does look good on me. It better. <laughs> oh crap, the jacket. You forgot to take it off. You decide that now is the moment to make the big move. Tell him you're cold. Mm. I feel like honesty is the way to go when um, pretending to love someone in order to steal their inheritance. So yeah. You can fence. I think I've developed feelings for you. <gasps> we did it. <laughs> That, never mind, that wasn't truthful at all. That was the complete opposite of being truthful. <laughs> I might be developing feelings for you too, but I'm concerned. I can't let anything get in the way of my dreams. Not my chicken empire. What happens if you, this beautiful woman that I met in culinary school, um, fall, we fall in love and it truly turns out that you don't actually love me and you're just here. You're just here to steal my fortune. What, Colonel? That's insane. I would never do anything like that. But the thought of Lydia being the Colonel in the midst of such an emotional breakthrough gives you pause. You stop yourself. Colonel? Hmm. Yes, Amanda! Fucking capital letters. <laughs> I honestly think that this may be the beginning of something wonderful. I think you're right. We should take things slow by opening a Kentucky Fried Chicken together. <laughs> you talk late into the night and drift off into a slumber. Dream sequence! Gorgeous as ever. <laughs> you awake to a beautiful morning in Colonel Sanders' hideaway. Why can't we just call this his house? 
<laughs> is that not what this is? Did you make the right decision on how to respond to Colonel Sanders? Only time will truly tell. Today is the day that could change the rest of your life. You think about the new secret ingredient that you just learned about. <laughs> What's this one? The last one was salt. This one's just black pepper. In some jurisdictions, black pepper is even illegal, but this recipe has a secret. How will they know? <laughs> Your thoughts are interrupted when Colonel Sanders emerges from his room. He's holding a gorgeously plated breakfast. Your mouth waters at the sight of it. Here's a simple breakfast. I just whipped it up. <laughs> we are all dying of, like, <laughs> nutritional imbalances. Because the only thing I have seen people eat in this game are biscuits and fried chicken. That singular dessert Ashley made, um, and the poison that killed that one dude. <laughs> but other than that, I, we haven't consumed any other, like, that coleslaw? The first vegetable we've eaten in the last two days. You taste Colonel Sanders' food, and it takes you on a journey. When you return, he's waiting to ask you an important question. Would you say that we're the perfect match? I don't know, man. I literally met you two days ago. I I don't even know your... <laughs> That's a lie. I actually do know your first name. <laughs> it's not Colonel. It's Harlan. But we talked about that in the game. <laughs> what the heck is this game? What do you mean, what the heck is this game? Haven't you ever wanted to date Colonel Sanders? The CEO and creator of the KFC Empire? <laughs> How presumptuous. My, cute, my cuisine, your taste buds, that is. Such confidence, such grace. He could be the world's greatest gifts to cookery. Take him down a pet. I'll flatter him because as we've realized before, um, Colonel Sanders likes a woman who has zero personality and just favors him. <laughs> oh, for real, what's the game? No, I, I don't think... <laughs> I don't think you understand what's going on. I literally am dating Colonel Sanders. Um, the game is called I Love You, Colonel Sanders, a finger licking good dating simulator. <laughs> it's a dating simulator about dating Colonel Sanders. <laughs> a single tear begins to pool in the corner of my eye as he gazes out the window. And with the right business partner, I know I can't fail. Business partner? Could he be talking to you? This is all happening so quickly. Oh my god, I'm fangirling, except I'm not fangirling because we've come to the conclusion that I hate this man and I literally just want the money. Overcome with emotion and confusion by your feelings, you are on the verge of tears, unable to speak. The only answer that you can find is to run out the door and get home. There's still one more day of school after all. The University of Cooking School, Academy for Learning, waits for no one. <laughs> Poor Jesus. Oh, thank you, Father Kala. Appreciate it. Hold on, I'm also gonna water. Is my water bottle still weirdly leaking? I don't know. You get home to find something very surprising. Your best friend waiting there for you. Huh. What is happening? Lord Jesus. Ha! <laughs> Hold on, give me a second. I'm just gonna throw that on. <laughs> All right, Miriam is here. I don't know why, because again, at this point, like. <laughs> Sorry guys, this is just gonna have to be <laughs> what is happening for a hot second, but. <laughs> Miriam's here. Again, I've abandoned this girl at least like four times. I'm also just realizing, is this just like a K-pop poster up here? Because <laughs> they all look the same, which makes me just realize this is just like a weird generic K-pop group. <laughs> Where have I been? Why are you in my home is the real question. <laughs> because I had one heck of a night. I've been desperate to talk to you about it, but I couldn't find you and I got worried that something bad happened to you. It's okay, I was just... But now that it turns out you're fine, I can totally get you up to speed on the saga of Miriam. Miriam, literally no one gives a shit about you. <laughs> you will not believe what happened to me after school yesterday. I went on a date. I think I can believe that. Since I've been partnered up with Clank, he asked me to go out with him. <laughs> of course I told him, you better keep that dial turned to polite and respectful. I'm not that kind of gal. But he was just interested in spending on some one-on-one -on -one time together and getting to know me. So yeah, sure, I can get to... 
<laughs> I can get to know the little mechanic guy. So long story short, he took me skydiving with his friends. But things quickly spiraled out of, out of control. Did she just say skydiving as if that's a typical first get date to go on with a talking pressure cooker? Oh, Jesus. Also, welcome back to the stream, Phil. Glad to have you here. <laughs> a year of streaming. That's horrifying to think about. <laughs> Alright, anyway. Skydiving. Yeah, sure. <laughs> and I'm not really sure where we stand. I... Don't give Miriam time to tell the whole story. However, bottling up the details of my own night is just too much to bear. Well, I went on a date too, because world's not just about you, Miriam. And now I'm starting to realize why <laughs> I, I have abandoned you so often in the last, like, two days. I spent the night with him. You, what? <laughs> oh, God. Ah, nothing happened, but the emotional connection... A oh, wowzers. <laughs> uh, Miriam tells you to move on from this whole Colonel Sanders obsession and focus on school. I'm so upset. Like, I'm... <laughs> I'm so upset that, like, <laughs> Miriam's just such... Why are you like this? Lord Jesus, it's still going wild. Never mind, that works. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Onwards we go. If being obsessed with Colonel Sanders is wrong, then I don't want to be right. <laughs> After a short argument, you both agree to go your separate ways. Dude, yeah, no, fuck Miriam. <laughs> when you arrive at school, you encounter your rivals in the quad. You can tell from a distance that they're picking on Pop, though he himself might not quite grasp that fact. Because, you know, he's Pop. What's a swirly? It sounds delicious. <laughs> oh, it's great. I'll order you one up right away. I'll have my swirly with sprinkles, please. <laughs> sprinkles is a dog and a treat. <laughs> you can get your swirly dip, too. Why don't you pick on someone your own size? <laughs> because I'm literally the biggest person at this school. There's a horse that Colonel Sanders rides to school, but who would dare pick such a gentle and beautiful creature? <gasps> You've got some nerve, Amanda, suggesting I pick on a defenseless horse. Now you're twisting my words, and I won't have it. You clench your fist, but from the injury from yesterday's mixer <laughs> accident, you make... It's Lord Jesus. <laughs> but with the accident from yesterday's mixer incident, um, your hand hurts. Doesn't look like you can go on cooking like that. Might as well just give up. I'll never give up. Ever. Colonel Sanders arrives. Just as it appears, things are close to boiling over. A natural, intuitive person. He can sense that something's been going on. Is everyone excited for the last day of school? Amanda? How's that hand feeling? I'm sure you'll be back to fighting form by this <sighs> afternoon. Aren't you concerned about my hand, Colonel? Yesterday, I almost broke a nail winning so hard. Fuck off, Ashley. Technically, I don't believe a winner was decided, but your pres presentation was quite impressive. <laughs> What's he doing complimenting her? Hmm. But what about the delicate? <laughs> what about the flavor of my delicate, warm, gooey chocolate sauce? I. Why is she winking? <laughs> I'm uncomfortable. It was clear that you're passionate about how your food is received. <laughs> that was a lot of words to say. It was bland. I didn't... Excuse me, Amanda, but I'm more than capable of speaking for myself. Uh -huh. I also just realized that the lights have been off this entire time, and I cannot tell what the lighting in this situation has been, so... Huh. <laughs> if this were Food Wars, Ashley! <laughs> uh, you, you missed that first E. <laughs> Dude, there's so many fucking letters in her name. I'm always interested in discussing the fine art of fine foods. See you inside, Amanda. Annoyed by Colonel Sanders' inability to see Ashley for who you know she really is, you walk across the quad to get some distance. In an attempt to distract yourself from how slighted you feel by that interaction with Ashley, you pull out the spell book you recovered from yesterday and start flipping through the pages. Whoa, that's that book. It looks like bad news. 
It's just something I found lying around. It would appear as some sort of grimoire, uh, but I don't believe in that magic stuff. A grimoire? Like a book of spells? I don't know. Who would spend so much time decorating a magic book if it weren't really powerful? I can think of one surefire way to find out. You open a page covered to an arcane warning. Cast only in case of extreme emergency. It says around the edges of the page. You can use a spell here that says it'll erase anyone <laughs> I choose from all of my memories. If I scrub out Colonel Sanders, that would probably help me focus better on the upcoming final exam. <laughs> That's way- that is way drastic. Couldn't you, I don't know, do something else? Like, anything else not rooted in dark magic? Like, maybe tie, like, a string around your finger? <laughs> okay, fine. It is drastic. But desperate times call for desperate measures. <laughs> I've got a memory erasing spell sitting right in front of me and a pretty good excuse to try it out. Um... I know it's gonna be a, a bad time, but I kind of want to try this spell. Also, hello, Evan. <laughs> uh, I, no, I'm not gonna do it. I take my friend's advice and put the book away. It's almost time for class. Sprinkles is already in the room, waiting for the students to arrive. He clears his voice and makes a quick announcement. I want you all to know, I feel something of a dog moment coming on, but I can assure you, it's nothing to be afraid of. Um, his cute little nose scrunches up and he begins to breathe quickly. Um, dogs can be rather unpredictable, especially Sprinkles. Wait to see what happens. He must be hungry. Reach for some old homework to give him a snack. I kinda wanna give him a snack. You reach into your backpack and grab some homework from last semester that you forgot to turn in. <laughs> Sprinkles immediately goes for it and gobbles the sheet of paper like it's a piece of fresh chicken rawhide. Ahem, I apologize for the outburst. I know it seems a little cliche, but it's not much of, but not much in this world satisfied like ungraded work. My Amanda, were you studying something with cinnamon? <laughs> uh, I have been sitting in on a lecture of a series around uh, art of cake baking. How insightful. This actually brings up an important point. Thank you, Amanda, for reminding me to dole out the indispensable but with indispensable bit of wisdom. You see, but before he can go any further, Miriam's love of drama spills over into the class. Sprinkles is interrupted by the whirs and sparks coming from the back of the classroom. <laughs> I told you to save it for after class. You think I wanted to be thrown from a plane and strapped to a stranger? Miriam and Clank appear to be arguing, but you still haven't learned to speak Clank's language <laughs> of mechanical noises. But no, you had to show off it to your cool friends, Jeff and Joan, J and J forever. Watch us form a triangle midair as we descend. Triangles are the strongest shape, don't you know? Yeah, well, if that, yeah, well, that doesn't make it a great date. Uh. Then take Jeff and Joan with you. You can hold the hands pedal down the mountain or a cliff for all I care. Clank begins to shudder. Steam pours out of the gaps in his panels and then a loud ding stops him in his tracks. Miriam, did you just kill Clank? No amount of seasoning is gonna make me want to eat that Clank. <laughs> Clank burps out a completely deep fried sneaker considering that he himself has wheels and not feet. It's not entirely clear where he got that from. <laughs> In terms of deep fried footwear, it looks okay, I guess. Yeah, Clank, Jeff, and Jones sound like a great thruple. Clank slowly rolls out of the room to be alone with his shoe. Everyone tries to pretend like they didn't see that entire thing go down. Nothing like loud public breakups to cast a pail over the final day of school. Well, that was... unfortunate. But we mustn't be distracted because what lies ahead is the final competition showdown challenge exam, TM. <laughs> trademarked. What do you mean you're still working on the title? Bitch, you already have it trademarked. But I think you get it. Test time approaches. See you all in the arena. But before you can think about your upcoming competition, there's a very beautiful soul nearby that a uh, need of a pep talk. Hey, Miriam. Are you okay? Uh, okay. I'm so mad I could smash a tiny mug filled with several droplets of hot cocoa. What? Okay, I'm so mad I could smash a tiny mug spilling several droplets of cocoa all over the floor. How could he embarrass me in class like that in front of everyone? Her tiny cocoa is a delicious treasure, so you know that this breakup is no joke. Oh, 
<laughs> I know that you know this, but I'm gonna say it out loud. You don't need anyone, Miriam, especially me. Speaking of not needing me, I'm gonna leave because I don't want to talk to you anymore. <laughs> Me and you, we're gonna cruise through this final test and hit the carpool lane to Success City. Miriam brightens up, imagining the wind rushing away through her short bangs. But she hesitates to embrace the feeling all the way. <laughs> You're not gonna saddle up on Colonel Sanders' stallion and ride off into the sunset without me? That is exactly what I'm gonna do, Miriam. But again, I'm just using this entire game as an excuse to gaslight culinary students. I didn't do it during my own culinary uh, courses. So, might as well do it now. Of course not. Well, maybe, sort of. But I'm sure there's a po- <laughs> Wait. Of course not. Well, maybe, sort of. But I'm sure there's a pony somewhere out there with your name on it and a big ranch. <laughs> Enough for us and whoever else we want to bring along. If it's not Pop or Clank or anyone else you meet today, tomorrow, or this whole year, so what? You're a special person who shouldn't settle for the first someone who shows a little interest anyhow. Uh, Miriam gives you a big hug and wipes the tears from her cheeks. Uh, I should really re review my- Lord Jesus. I should really review my menu for today. I'm gonna make a very special soup. And I bet that Professor Dog is gonna love it. Uh, <laughs> while you're pep-topping- Talking Miriam, you completely missed lunch, but that's okay because you had a better idea on how to spend time before your exam. You decided to head to the arena early to practice your dish. This is it. The location of the final challenge. A test of will. A test of courage. A test of talent. A test of test. It's a test. <laughs> a, a chance to beat the pants off of Van Van, the supposed man-man, and his eviler counterpart, Ashley. As planned, you begin to run through a quick test of a recipe you've been working on. Amanda's famous chicken pot pie. After practicing for months, making the dish- It's- Why didn't you practice a pot pie for months? <laughs> making a dish comes second nature to you, and you're able to quickly get a fresh pot pie in the oven. But as soon as you do, your cram session was interrupted by Colonel Sanders! Amanda, what are you doing in here? There's still time before the final exam. Oh, just- Taking it all in, I'm big into visualizing success. I'm looking at my station, picturing my victory. The pot pie has begun to bake and smells, and the smell slowly filling the space around hmm. you. <laughs> visualizing, huh? That's too bad. I was hoping you were in here cooking something delicious. You usually happily share your food with anyone who's hungry, but the last time you let Colonel Sanders get in your head, it cost you a cook-off. You decide that it's time to put your cooking above your romantic desires, but that decision gets hard to stick when the, uh, the oven timer goes off behind you. Fess up about practicing your dish. Okay, okay, okay. You got me. I'm doing a little bit more than visualizing. I know, my nose can smell a pot pie from 400 yards. That's so specific. <laughs> That's an oddly specific distance, uh, but you expect nothing less from a man... From such an oddly specific man. Dude, the more that I learn about this man, the more I'm concerned. Apparently he has magical special powers, and he was born from an egg, and... <laughs> he was a shitty mule handler. I don't know. You can smell a pot pie from 400 meters away. You know it was a pot pie just from the smell? Not just a pot pie, but a chicken pot pie with an all-butter crust. And my nose is telling me something else. Oh no, is it burning? Ha <laughs> no. I can smell... That's made with a heaping ton of TLC. Tangy leftover chicken. <laughs> That's what TLC stands for. Tangy leftover coleslaw. <laughs> but it'll probably start burning any second if you don't pull it out. The moment of truth. Wow. <gasps> the best pot pie I've ever tasted. I've always loved country cooking. And I could eat this all day. But there's no time left. The final showdown is about to begin. Sprinkles lays down the ground rules. There are no rules, that is, except to cook with everything you've got. You step up for the cook-off of a lifetime. You decide that mac and cheese plus the pot pie you've been practicing are just the dishes that will put you over to the edge of victory. Meanwhile, both Van Van and Ashley are prepping wildly for their elaborate dishes per their usual over-the-top selves. Miriam has a giant magnifying glass and several sets of tweezers. She's definitely prepared and to go big, going small. My opening move is to stab Ashley. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I'm not making- My dish is a 
revenge. Best served cold. That's why I locked Ashley in the walk-in freezer for three hours. <laughs> Colonel Sanders seems to be harnessing his 11 herbs and spices. <laughs> but he's trying to find a way to improve on something. His original recipe, fried chicken. The intensity of the room is starts at a full 10 out of 10 with a frenzy of action. Everyone's calling out really cool specific cooking moves as they prepare their food. Wow, this is getting serious. Colonel Sanders batters his chicken as it elevates through the or as it levitates through the air. Egg wash. <laughs> Miriam furiously injects ingredients into itty bitty pots of broth. <laughs> Best friend Baster Bast Baster Blaster Best friend bastard blastered is what I'm going with. Van Van flexes his pectorals as he chops the open sea urchin. Let's rock and roid. <laughs> Ashley scoops her pastries off into the tray with lightning speed. Shallow personality spatula. <laughs> Even Clank gets in on it. Five dial pressure point chicken cooking technique. Wait, when did Clank learn to speak English? <gasps> it's the singularity as foretold. Mm. We mustn't let it happen or all the <laughs> appliance uprising will take us all. Baster? No. Baster. Bastard. <laughs> we mustn't let it happen or the appliance uprising will take us all. Self-destruct. Van Van quickly unplugs Clank and rolls him out of the back door of the arena. As you frantically prepare your dish, you notice Ash Lay has her spellbook out. Is she gonna use some dark magic to turn the tide? You've got a book of your own, and you're desperate not to see her win another battle. Should you use this opportunity to fight magic with magic, even if it is almost certainly evil magic? Um, cast a spell or do it the hard way. Colonel Sanders is gonna appreciate us doing it the hard way. Because Colonel Sanders appreciates, um, just a good bit of hardness. <laughs> We're gonna do it the hard way, because he said on other occasions that the easy way is the bad way. So, who needs magic when you've got passion? Who needs magic when you have a meat cleaver the size of a fucking loaf of bread? I'm gonna do it the hard way. Colonel Sanders sees that you've chosen to win on your own terms instead. And he gives you a subtle wink from across the classroom. See? I believe in you, Amanda. Miriam noticed too. Aww. And I always believed in you, Amanda, since we were little kids, because I'm your best friend forever. And Colonel Sanders won't let me... <laughs> Colonel Sanders uh, won't replace me as my best friend. Miriam, you've already been replaced. Let's get real. <laughs> you turn to notice that Miriam is at your station cheering for you. Miriam, what about your dish? If you're here cheering, who's cooking? <laughs> Tiny food, short time, and it's actually already done, so I thought I'd help you. Oh, that's sweet, but Miriam tosses a handful of spices directly into your boiling noodles. Uh -huh. It's the secret ingredient! <laughs> However, she doesn't know that you lied and the secret ingredient was made up, and where in the world did she get Eye of Newt from? The boiling pot explodes, sending Miriam flying backwards. The watery noodles begin to swirl in the air, bubbling up into a dark cloud that thickens and congeals before your very eyes. It is I, Steve, the Spork Monster. Steve? Wait, what happened to Borko? You're not here to battle me, are you? <laughs> we Spork Monsters are many. I think Borko had the day off, but you have conjured Steve, and I hate to battle, so you say you're doing pretty alright. <laughs> oh hey, you're in the middle of a cooking competition? I love this stuff. It's better than TV. You crazy kids and your culinary skills really impress me. Mind if I hang out? I'm sorry, Steve, but um... I'm, I'm kind of in the middle of something. Do you mind? <laughs> Steve the Spork Monster notices that you've got the Grimmore stash beneath your cooking station. I see what you're up to. Crisscross some magical items and then accidentally summon me, huh? Huh, <laughs> yeah, you guessed it. Sort of. If you were here, would you mind tossing some fresh noodles into a pot of salted water? <laughs> I'd love to. I always wanted to, <laughs> to be a top chef, actually. You know, when I was just a little spork pup, Back in the old country, you could feel the spork monster winding up to tell a very long story that involves... Oh, a very long and involved story. Uh, you don't know where exactly they came from, but it seems like it was probably lonely there. 
actually, you know what? Maybe you should just watch from the stands. I really need to focus on the competition. <laughs> I understand. It's kind of like that time in monster school when I'd fallen asleep during the scare tactics class and when I woke up. Spork monster, shut up! <laughs> you toss a serious stare at Steve and then he takes the hint. Never mind, I'll tell you later. Good luck. <laughs> um, I have suffered a huge setback and I don't know if I could ever win. I give up and drop out of culinary school. Dude, the amount of times that I thought about that literally in my- Like, we are literally on the last, like, battle. This is the last thing we have to do before we graduate this first one culinary school. But when I was in culinary school, I was literally in my last term. And I'm like, I want to drop out. I want to drop out of culinary school. I literally have, like, two months left. But I would rather just not have a college degree and waste all my money. But we're not going to drop out because that's not what I did in real life. So... I can do this. I have what it takes. I came here to win. <laughs> My hair turns mac and cheese orange. This is a weird color for mac and cheese to be, but my hair turns mac and cheese orange as the culinary energy flows through my body. My heart is pure. My hands are shaky. My taste buds have been preparing their entire lives for shitty. <laughs> yes, Amanda, you are the chosen one. You will avenge me. The power that you've been summoning immediately fades black out. You're interrupting my inspiring monologue. Sorry. My heart is pure. My hands are steady. My taste buds have been preparing their entire lives for this moment. I will show the world my cookery. You begin to levitate off the ground. Energy courses through my body. <laughs> you know what? With all of this power, I can do anything except turn back time, which would be super useful because you are powering up your chicken pot pie overcooked in the oven. And it can't be served, but don't worry, dear Amanda. You may have suffered some setbacks, but all is not lost. Impressed with your fortitude, Colonel Sanders decides that you've earned his support. I've been watching you today, and I must say, I'm truly impressed. You've been thinking on your feet and rolling with the punches. He steps up to your station and stands right beside you. I'm here to help. You've managed to take, uh, you've managed to make, all you've managed to make is mac and cheese. All the time is almost up. You're gonna need it. But Colonel Sanders, what about the tests? What will happen to you? What about the rules? Following the rules? Never really been my thing. I follow my heart. I follow the recipe. I follow chickens across the road. I don't know where they're going, but that's what I'm trying to figure out. <laughs> what a guy. Colonel Sanders unfolds a delicate white towel and reveals the most delicious fried chicken tenders you've ever laid your eyes upon. Besides, sometimes unexpected combinations can have surprising effects and surpass individual efforts. Are you suggesting... Are we dipping chicken tenders in mac and cheese? If we combine forces, we can perform the perfect food union. Time's up, students. With time expired, the moment everyone has been waiting for, you must now prepare and present your dishes. A handful of students stand tall, but the class seems incomplete. Seems like we're missing some of the students. Pop, clank. From off screen, uh, you hear a pure and innocent giggle that can only come from one student. <laughs> I'm flying! Sounds like he's coming from the broom closet over there. Miriam, what do you mind? <laughs> Inside of the closet, you see Pop hanging on a broom hook of the elastic of his underpants. Pop, get down! Why are we yelling at Pop? Pop just got wedgied. <laughs> Pop just got fucking wedging the shit out of. <laughs> Let me guess, did Van Van have something to do with this? When someone asks for a wedgie, who am I to refuse? I thought it was a wedgie <laughs> I thought a wedgie was a salad. <laughs> like a wedge salad. <laughs> Looks like Pop's eliminated from the challenge, seeing as he didn't cook anything. I can't feel my legs, may I be excused? <laughs> sure. You kids and your pranks, I must say, I, it's not the worst prank in CSAL history, but it's not exactly yearbook material. Wait a second, pranks, pranks, clank! Where did that pressure cooker roll off to? You wait to hear the signature word, beep, or other onomatopoeia, but there is none. Somehow he must have gotten unplugged, I guess. We'll have to figure that out later. That leaves only four remaining students, please. Collect your final projects. Yes, it has been a long semester. What do you mean four people left? Does it count me and Colonel Sanders as one? Because there's Miriam. 
Van Van, Ashley, and then me and Colonel Sanders. That's five people. Where the fuck are you getting four from? Sprinkles, I understand that you're a dog and your mathematic and arithmetic might not be up to par. But you're a goddamn professor, so... Wow, three whole days long. But after days of hard work, the time has come for me to eat. Miriam, please step forward. Describe your dish. I've made... Oh, tender udon noodles and savory soup. Wait, that's adorable. <laughs> My word, it's so delicate. Is that a teeny tiny uh, Naruto Maki? A spy afloat in the itsy bitsy bowl? Yes, chef. <laughs> Please call me Sprinkles. Chef's my father's name. <laughs> Corgis make excellent account accountants. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yes, Sprinkles. <laughs> and some green tea made from baby tea leaves that I picked myself. Sprinkles carefully sniffs around the dish before opening his mouth and letting just the tip of his pink dog tongue dip into the bowl. Sublime. Would anyone else like a taste? Oh, come on. I'm not one of those dogs who doesn't floss. I even have really cute electronic toothbrush for dogs. Fine, I'll enjoy it all by myself. And in a flash, the entire meal has been devoured. Not that it took much. It was less than a thimble's worth of soup. A+. plus. Rarely do I taste a dish with such love poured into it as yours. Miriam is overjoyed, and she gives a huge hug. Thank you, Thank you Amanda, for helping me believe in myself. I abandon you so often in this game. I don't know, I gave you a singular pep talk. I gave one singular monologue on the last day of culinary school and now apparently you have, what? Standards? I don't know. <laughs> Van Van, you're up. Now describe your dish. I made uni over, or, uh, uni over smooth egg custard and an ax Hewn urchin shell topped with caviar. Is this also going to kill someone? Did you skewer one type of urchin with the spines from a second different colored type of urchin? Y yes, Sprinkles. A bit much, don't you think? That's exactly what I did it. A bit much is kind of my brand. Doesn't it look cool? Uh, <laughs> Sprinkles leans in to sniff the uni, but he can't get his nose close on account of all the spikes. He begins to pot it erratically, uh, causing the custard to slosh all around. Woof woof. Please be gentle with my cuisine. Finally, Sprinkles goes all in. Tongue at first, but he can't get past all of the needles. He feels reeled back as his tongue is poked and prodded. Youch, my tongue. The professor appears to be having an allergic reaction to the sing. I can't eat this. I keep poking my tongue. This qualifies. A stunning turn of events. Who would have thought that serving food in a bowl made of needles would be difficult to eat? Dejected, Van Van does not go gentle into the night. Disqualified for glamour? Don't discount sympathy. This isn't the last you've heard of me. Before forcing, forcing us to endure his swollen tongue for another moment, uh, Sprinkles graciously laps up a bowl of milk. I know, I know, yeah, I'm a dog and I drink milk. Get over it. Sometimes it helps calm my agitated tongue. Next student, Ashley. It's time to step up. Now describe your dish. I made orange blossom Turkish delights uh, in a light rose water syrup topped with French meringue connected by sugar glass. I can make this too. Turkish delight is literally just... That doesn't- that does not look like Turkish Delight at all. <laughs> it's like- I don't know, it's like hard meringue? It's like baked meringue with like a bunch of other stuff added into it. So like orange blossom uh, baked into meringue and then rose water syrup is literally just- yeah, rose water that you probably uh, made into a simple syrup. And then French meringue, real easy, it's French meringue. Actually, what is French meringue? Because there's Italian meringue, Swiss meringue. I know there's a German meringue. I'm not sure if there's a French meringue. I don't know. Sugar glass? Yeah, no, I took a sugar course. Yeah, sure. His hands look like they were drawn by an AI. <laughs> that actually doesn't sound too bad. Indeed, it's quite delightful. However, I'd ask that you please refrain from eating it or attempting to taste it in any way, as it's very fragile. And meant to be a display piece? And don't eat the food? At cooking school? 
Got toast in your ears or something? Amanda, I told you. Display piece. <laughs> Ashley, I must say, it is beautiful. However, it's a cooking competition. At a cooking school. <laughs> yeah, which is why I cooked it. And I did an extremely good job of cooking it too. I didn't realize that we were having an eating exam. <laughs> if I wanted to be judged on eating, I'd go to College of Eating, School for the Hungry. <laughs> I suppose you could smell it if you absolutely insisted, but don't breathe too hard. You might disrupt the sugar spiral. <laughs> Food that cannot be eaten? I can't judge. You're disqualified. Uh, rage overtakes Ashley, and she finally cannot keep her two-faced routine up. You wouldn't know high-end cuisine if it cooked you. You said that already. And with that, Ashley storms over to redirect herself to being the best, but this time without being shackled by trying to be fake nice like everyone else. This isn't the last time you've heard of me either. If this class gets much smaller, I'll be teaching myself. You and Colonel Sanders are the final cooks. Step up together. Two chefs! What began as a bowl of delicious mac and cheese has become something else. He examines it closely, uh, sniffing and eyeing the bowl. Uh-oh, I don't have a good feeling about this. Somewhere in the room, a literal drum roll plays. Just when I thought I had seen everything in this kitchen, you give me this. This thing and completely blown me away in my 49 dog years of life. I have never tasted anything so delicious and perfectly balanced. It's so delicious, in fact, that everyone passes the class that's still here, which is literally just me, Colonel Sanders, and Miriam, who has already passed the class. <laughs> you pass, and you pass, and you pass, and you get a pass. Everyone gathers around it. Oh, there are... Other culinary students that weren't main characters involved in the story. Gotcha. <laughs> Everyone gathers around and partakes in the mac and cheese bowl. They all seem to transcend into reality, into another dimension. You win! Together, you and Sanders have made a new menu item. The new menu item is so impressive that Van Van and Ashley are drawn back in by its magnificent fragrance. <clears throat> the other students don't have faces either. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> When they gaze upon your mac and cheese bowl, they admit that you are indeed an excellent chef. Sprinkles declared you have passed. Everyone has passed. There were supposed to be more battles, but come on. How could anything be better than this one? Now that the school year... <laughs> now that the school three days is completed, everyone's graduated, the students return for one last assignment to get their groove on. The cafeteria has been completely redecorated in order to serve as the site of school's graduation dance. Compared to the massive high-tech cooking arena, the humble decor seems downright cutesy and cozy. Oh. DJ Dog- <laughs> DJ Dog in the house! Ow, ow, ow! <laughs> you knew that Sprinkles was a master chef, but a world-renowned turns to turntablist? A master chef, but a master of ceremonies? MC Sprinkles? How did you get here? Who says you can't teach an old dog new tricks? Van Van and Ashley tell everyone that they've committed themselves to righting wrongs they did while they were the villains. For a moment, you actually believe them. Not another haunting. No ghosts allowed at graduation. It's clearly written in the school's bylaws. I was never actually a ghost. It was a trick to get you guys to finally notice me. Oh, the music. And now that everyone is together, it's a spork monster. He's totally mellowed out. Everyone, look! The spork monster is no more. From here on out, I prefer everyone refer to me as my new name. Party monster. <laughs> the student tries finishing what he has to say, but everyone is too wrapped up talking to spork. Oh, I'm sorry. Party monster. Dejected. Student walks off. Maybe things didn't work out for Miriam romantically, but she found a love in her cooking, and, she know, and you know that she's going to do great. A red carpet rolls out across the floor ballroom. It's like a Hollywood movie premiere. Who would command such an entrance? <laughs> it's Pop. He, he arrived to the late to the dance, but apparently for good reasons. Walking in the carpet, uh, you see perched atop his dirty chef hat. A crown? <laughs> Welcome back, Pop. Uh, I know you weren't able to complete the final exam and accept your diploma, so we had it mailed directly to your father. We figured that it was the least he could do for the school's dean. Oh, 
Nepo baby, gotcha. <laughs> it's not, this isn't what I think of when I picture a Nepo baby, but I see it. <laughs> and we get a new wing of the school, not to mention the honor of educating the son of Chancellor such and such. <laughs> the music at this dance is interrupted by the sound of sparkling, sparkling and electrical hissing. It's Clank, who's arrived late to the dance. Now that I've graduated, I can reveal my truth. Whoa, he's still doing the talking thing. <laughs> I am Clank, and I am not of this earth. I'm actually from a faraway planet in another dimension. What? <laughs> what? Hmm. I actually feel like I knew this the whole time. <laughs> now that I've learned the ways of your kind, I must return. Miriam, will you come with me? <gasps> I don't know what to say. Besides, no, obviously. I have, <laughs> I've just begun to learn who I really am and this isn't time for me to devote my life to figuring out who you are, Clank. You're blown away by Miriam's maturity. It's pretty clear that she's managed to surpass you by that regard. <laughs> I understand, kind of. Humans are weird. A portal opens up and Clank disappears through it. And <laughs> finally, Colonel Sanders arrives. Howdy, classmates. Just like the first day when you met him, he has come prepared to feed the entire class. However, it's not enough to just give them a bucket of chicken. No, no, no. This time, a full meal. <laughs> I didn't get to be the most famous chicken man in the history of chicken and man by not reminding people to go out and buy my chicken. I'm not going to lie to you guys. After the stream last, uh, or the last time that I streamed this game, um, I bought myself KFC. And so there is... There is KFC in my fridge, and I was eating it the entire time I was editing the last, the last VOD. <laughs> so I did end up buying KFC from this game, which is what I feel like was the whole purpose of the game anyway, but... The end? Question mark? <laughs> no, it's not the end, as everyone feasts on their delicious chicken dinner. <laughs> Colonel Sanders finds you sitting at the edge of the dance floor. Colonel Sanders... Yes, Amanda! <laughs> I couldn't help but wonder, was our final team up purely an act of strategy carried out by two cunning chefs? Or was it something more? <laughs> I'm afraid I can't answer that question directly. Instead, I'd like to ask you a question of my own. May I have this do si -do? <laughs> Colonel Sanders extends, or extends his hand out to you. And you feel a surge of energy jump off the tip of his fingers. His hand, the hand of a master chef, so delicate in the craft of fine cookery, so tender yet refined, so milky smooth, fingers like ba finely battered drumsticks turned into flowers soaked in buttermilk and dusted with exotic spices. But they do not reach for tongs, a knife, or even a spork. Tonight, they reach for you. And I thought our feet may tire of dancing. I believe that this is just the beginning of our steps together. Colonel Sanders, I, will you join me, not on the dance floor, but at the kitchen as my co-chef and partner in both business and life? <gasps> I gasp. Could it be? Is he really saying me and you together for the next 30 years until you <laughs> pass away? <laughs> oh, God. Ever since I met you, my dream has changed. It's not enough to simply be open, or it's not enough to simply open the world's greatest chain of fried chicken restaurants. No, even then, my life would still be incomplete without you there by my side. What do you say, partner? I say, I love you, Colonel Sanders. I don't actually, though, but we did get the KFC. We, we, we copped the Empire um, 30 more years until he passes away. I only have to see, deal with, uh, <laughs> I don't know, whatever fuckery this is. But we did it. <laughs> we dated KFC. KFC presents. <laughs> God, what a beautiful, what a beautiful game. 10 out of 10. Absolutely just pure magic. <laughs>
cool. I want this to become an actual anime now. <laughs> but that... That's it. That was the game. That is I love you, Colonel Sanders, a finger licking good dating simulator. <laughs> what a wild time we've been on. What a wild ride this was. <laughs> um, but yeah, that that that's the game. What a wild time. <laughs> but I think that is it for today's stream. I'm streaming again on Thursday. I don't know what I'm gonna be streaming though. Maybe I'll make one of the, the desserts. I, I, I know it would be really easy to make the second dessert that Ashley did. Um, the first one would probably take a little bit more effort, but that's a possibility. Otherwise, I might go back to Stardew Valley. But thank you guys so much for being here and so much for watching. Um, and I will see you guys when I see you guys next. Goodbye.